interesting. Never have looked at lactic acid bacteria before. Uh, really get excited and uh, become red. So, which means uh, uh, be, uh, being as uh, uh, symbiotic bacteria microbiota, the lactic acid bacteria uh, intrinsically do not uh, activate the epithelial cells. Rather, uh, it goes through the epithelia and uh, activate the myeloid cells in the pair's patches. So in pairs patches, uh, next the what it does to the uh, those uh, so-called phagocytotic cells to see the outer world, the immune system needed to eat those uh, bacteria, and those uh, phagocytotic cells are dendritic cells, macrophages, uh, and neutrophils. But we are inter interested in dendritic cells because it can give um, antigen uh, information to T cells to acquire the immunity. And so we uh, co-cultured the lactic acid bacteria and the other bacteria with the dendritic cells and found that only lactic acid bacteria can induce high level of interferon beta uh, from the dendritic cells. And this is very important. It has an antiviral effect as the interferon beta itself. But we also interested in this uh, uh, anti-inflammatory uh, role of the interferon beta in the intestine. And we made an experiment with the DSS induced colitis model, the experimental uh, colitis model. Like after inducing the colitis, the mouse has an inflammatory region like this. But if we feed the uh, heat field, heat field, the lactic acid bacteria, uh, it prevents the inflammation. But if we neutralize the interferon beta so that the interferon beta is no more active in vivo, uh, we cannot prevent the inflammation. And this is all reproduced in all the uh, cytokine, chemokines, inflammatory spores, uh, which means that um, this uh, uh, heat field bacteria, lactic acid bacteria, can induce interferon beta and prevent colitis with anti inflammatory mechanism. So, next, we tried to uh, determine what is the signaling pathway that interferon beta is produced from the dendritic cells. And to make the story short, I just show you this picture. The uh, immune receptor which was used was toroidal receptor 3, and its ligand is a double-stranded RNA. Very peculiarly, lactic acid bacteria are being a bacteria. This is very strange, but they have lots of double-stranded RNA and the stimulate the dendritic cells. This is uh, a characteristic other bacteria do not have. So uh, to summarize here that uh, uh, lactic acid bacteria are phagocytosed by the dendritic cells and recognized by toroidal receptor 3 and produce interferon beta, uh, which prevent the colitis. And th this is uh, very stoichiometry. Um, effect because if we look at the lactic acid bacteria with a different amount of double-stranded RNA, you can see the correlation of the uh, interferon beta amount produced from the dendritic cells. So this is a really a uh, ligand receptor uh, related uh, phenomenon. And if we look at the mice uh, or the dendritic cells from mice without toroidal receptor 3 from uh, gene mutated mice, they have much less interferon beta amount in the intestine and they are more susceptible to the uh, colitis. And importantly, even if we feed the lactic acid bacteria to those mutant mice, you do not see the preventive effect anymore. This is just like you neutralize interferon beta. And one more important thing, why the lactic acid bacteria are very physiologically important to our body. Uh, we see the upregulation of this receptor after co-culturing with dendritic cells and the bacteria, as you see here. And other toll-like receptors like toll 2, toll 4, they are down-regulated, but toll 3 is upregulated after co-culture. So in the end, in our pairs, not, not our, this is mouse, mouse uh, data, but in mouse pairs patches, there are subset which has high level of toll-like -like receptor 3, which is CD8 alpha positive, CD103 positive cells, 
So this is a dendritic cells which are uh, very well known to be important for cross presentation in cancer immunity too. So uh, we believe this uh, uh, cell population is uh, uh, functionally maturated through the interaction with the uh, lactic acid bacteria in vivo. And via the interferon beta, it upregulates the systemic immunity. And I just have several uh, slides for the uh, T cells function from innate immunity to acquired immunity. And as the cartoon again, the interferon beta upregulate the IL-12 production and uh, upregulate the interferon gamma producing TH1 cells, which I mentioned, which is very important for the uh, systemic uh, immune response. And if we uh, immunize the antigens to those uh, mice, the wild type and tolerant receptor 3 knockout mice, only in wild type mice, uh, we see the upregulation of interferon gamma antigen specific interferon gamma producing cells here, uh, not in the knockout mice. So in the end, the TH1, TH2 ratio, uh, which has been discussed in a, a large field, uh, the in wild type mice, we see the up, uh, upregulation, uh, not upregulation, increase of the TH1, TH2 ratio, but not in the knockout mice. And along with that, the decrease of IgE. And now uh, we uh, looked if the human dendritic cells can do the same thing because this is all the mass system. And we actually saw the very similar process uh, in the peripheral blood derived dendritic cells and we submitted a paper last week. So we believe uh, this uh, interaction, the selected microbiota of um, lactic acid bacteria and the intestine has a system of this molecular system uh, to increase the protection. And this is all uh, individual fitness to environment. So each person, each animal need to uh, functionally maturate this uh, uh, protection mechanism. So uh, which means um, each requires uh, the uh, different uh, treatment if you need anyway. And I just skip these uh, slides. and observe the, uh, not only the interferon gamma producing cells, uh, but also the regulatory cells, the interferon beta is important. And uh, this is uh, all the story about the lactic acid bacteria, which is a symbiotic bacteria. So it has very special physiological mechanism, but what about the other uh, components of the food, like miso or koji? Uh, we started looking at uh, different uh, food components, what they can do as a molecular mechanism. The, the same, same experiment we did, uh, the contact with the dendritic cells, and actually if we just add miso or koji to the dendritic cells, uh, they can enhance, promote the IL-10 production from those dendritic cells, and if we knock out some uh, adapter molecules, uh, downstream of the innate immune receptors, uh, this uh, production really decreases, which means uh, if we not eat meat, miso, or koji, uh, and if they encounter with uh, dendritic cells, what it does is uh, uh, via the tolerant receptors in the ATH uh, adapter molecules, uh, it enhances uh, uh, cytokine production like IL-10. And only last few slides. Uh, we talked about the microbiota in the first part. Uh, if the tolerant receptor is not there, what happens to our microbiota? Is there a dysbiosis? And uh, yes, there is a very heavy dysbiosis in this uh, three knockout mice, the same age, same food, and only one gene mutation in the immune system really uh, results uh, in a uh, heavy dysbiosis. And this uh, Firmicutes rich uh, microbiota is uh, somewhat uh, uh, quite similar to some aged uh, intestine. And so we believe this uh, uh, immune system and uh, this biosis is very closely related and requires the only diet can adjust it. Along with the age, we need some uh, food medicine to adjust the inter interaction between immunity and uh, microbiota. 
but we all know that only one to one experiment doesn't work and it is very <coughs> difficult to uh, regulate the diet uh, in human being. So uh, we decided to uh, introduce that uh, human microbiota to young free mice. So if we, we put the microbiota from uh, allergic to babies, we can make the uh, mice with a more has more allergic symptoms. And uh, from the uh, what person, uh, is this is very uh, famous experiment from Gordon. And so we uh, established three different uh, enterotype, for instance, and fed miso to those mice. And so it's the difference of the uh, microbiota change of some species, and also very importantly, very different, uh, significantly different uh, immune response and the changes in immune response, the uh, antigen specific. And for, for here, the IL-17 is some inflammatory marker in systemic, not in the intestine, but in systemic, but the miso diet can really regulate the uh, expression of this inflammatory cytokine. So, uh, I hope uh, I uh, explained <laughs> all my uh, stories. Uh, for the, uh, oh, I misspelled here, natural healing power, the anti-infection, the anti-inflammation. <coughs> the diet is really a critical point and we need to look at the immune response and the microbiota uh, so that uh, to prevent all these uh, uh, NCDs, uh, non-communicable diseases, in addition to just uh, infection diseases. And this is all. Uh, the, the photo taken on ice in Cuba. And uh, Yohei did a lot of uh, mouse uh, system and the dendritic cells in the clear starches. And this is a long lasting collaboration with the common company and uh, Kada Omi has published in many paper and now Naho is now doing the uh, human cell system uh, which really nicely reproduces uh, uh, mouse uh, work. And thank you very much for listening. Thank you for uh, interesting presentation, Dr. Suzuki. Uh, any question? I would like to make a question. Uh, the lactobacillus uh, is uh, work to be uh, uh, intestinal uh, immune system uh, to moderate. Uh, the major uh, uh, microorganism uh, uh, Lactobacillus uh, for uh, fermentation is uh, lactobacillus a ma major micro uh, is and also uh, the uh, uh, major biota, microbiota uh, in uh, intestinal uh, uh, immune system also uh, lactobacillus. Yes. It is not uh, happen. Uh, how about the relationship? To this uh, looks like uh, like uh, chicken. Uh, which is first chicken uh, or? I think uh, 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 bo bo both are important. Yeah. They are symbiotic, but they didn't come from nowhere. They are from uh, maybe uh, mothers uh, or maybe uh, food, and and so uh, once it's established, each each has a very nice uh, lactic acid bacteria uh, uh, microbiota. I think that I need to prove in human being uh, from now on. Uh, but at least in mouse, uh, they have like 70% of them uh, can induce very nicely as interferon beta high mm -hmm. producers. And uh, from the fermented food, yes, uh, they, they have the very similar effect. So I, I think they can be a dead, they can be killed ones. So we, the fermented food has a very similar effect. Yeah as a symbiotic lactic acid bacteria, what I believe. And we really eat a lot of lactic acid bacteria okay. that is very important for a human to being. To increase, increase uh, the, the uh, if, if that increase the, the our own uh, yeah. uh, lactic acid bacteria too, uh, that uh, is what we are doing now. And, and uh, actually, it changes the fermented food, uh, uh, those uh, uh, lactic acid bacteria, changes uh, small intestinal microbiota too. Uh -huh. And not only the lactic acid bacteria, but also the clostridia, which uh, makes uh, uh, the, the second, uh, sorry, no, sorry, I forgot the name mm -hmm. of it, uh, but uh, which uh, make the metabolites that uh, harm the liver is decreased. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, this is the time. Uh, no, Maria, to Thank you.
Thank you very much, Doc, Dr. Hiroki and Dr. Noriko. Thank you very much. So we come to the last session. Uh, it's about one, one, one of Thai Earth, Sister Squadron Gularis. But before we start the, the next section, I would like to invite Dr. Tanika Patomvi Chaiwat. She is a lecturer of pharmaceutical botany, faculty of pharmacy, Mahidon University. She will be a chair for this session. So please welcome her to the stage. So, so you will go to the stage or here? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Please give her a big hand. Okay. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, so I would like to, uh, so we will start to the next topic is uh, about the effect of Sisus quadrangularis or Hajar. I'm not sure. I think it's not have a Japanese name. In Thai, it's Pet Sang Khan. On, uh, about the bone marker in osteopenia, women, a randomized double-blind placebo-controlled trial. And it, uh, the speaker will be Dr. Olalik Musikawong. Uh, OK, why? Let me introduce him. Uh, Dr. Olalik Musikawong is, was graduated from the got a medical degree from Faculty of Medicine, Kangen University in Thailand, and also got higher uh, diploma and also diploma from the uh, Thai Board of Thai Board of, Thai Board of Obstetric and Gynecology from the same university. Moreover, he was have many experience on this field by by uh, be a fellowship at in Japan at. Kurashiki Medical Center, Kurashiki, Japan, and also in at Ramatibadi Hospital, Mahidon University in Thailand. Moreover, he was trained in many countries, for example, at Belgium. For his uh, position, now he is a head of reproductive endocrinology and surgery clinic at Zopaya Apaipubet Hospital, and also secretary of complementary and alternative medicine, special interest group of American Society of Reproductive Medicine USA. And he also an assistant hospital director in research and academic affairs at this hospital. So let me uh, welcome him and give a presentation. Dr. Ola, please. Hello. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, thank you, uh, Chairman. And uh, Konnichiwa. Konnichiwa. Yokoso Pajin Buli. Okay, okay. I would like to introduce myself again. My name is Ola Lik. Okay, and uh, today I would like to talk about my topic. Mm -hmm. This is my lizard when I was a fellowship. Uh, it is the effect of this such quadrangularis on bone marker in osteopenia women. This is a randomized double by control trial. And this is this our hospital. You can see this in, in the like us. Uh, 6 p.m. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think uh, our hospital is one of the most beautiful hospital in the world that I uh, I was travel. Okay, and uh, as uh, the chairman said, I do the, my fellowship in uh, Kurashiki in uh, 2014. Uh, okay, and I'm really enjoy uh, the atmosphere in uh, Japan. This is one of the festival in Tokyo. I was there. I think everyone know that, right? Okay, okay. So now we start the talk. Uh, at the first, I would like to give the definition of the osteoporosis. As we know, the osteoporosis, the standard uh, definition is the BMD, is about bone mineral density. The T score is less than minus two point five, and osteopenia is, is the the bone marrow. Uh, bone mineral density is, is between minus 2.5 to minus 1. <laughs> Why I have to do this research? Because of now Thailand, we already be a aging society. Now we have around 16 of the aging population. And in next 20 years, we have about one third of our po population. But I think right now in, in Japan, you already be the very um, aging society. <laughs> and the second thing is uh, 
the morbidity and mortality of osteoporosis is very high. There is uh, some study that some patients who have the fracture at the hip, they will die about one-fifth in the first year after fracture. That's very important. And the last one is, is about our policy of the treatment. Now in Thailand, uh, the Eastern line is not covered or of the treatment of the osteoporosis. Most of our treatment is from the Western. So we have to find something that we can protect our population. So this is why I do this research. I would like to uh, show this is the Sisas quadrangularis. You can find it in India, in Southeast Asia, even in Africa. Most of the lizard is from Africa. In Thailand, we use the stem to treat. Okay. And uh, uh, we can use it off, uh, we can use this such quadrangular list for many purpose. Someone used for the weight reduction. This is my uh, next project for the weight reduction. But someone used for treatment the osteoporosis. Mm -hmm. And now at Chopaya Pai Pubet Hospital, we use the, this product for more than 10 years. We use the stem and powder and capsulation. For one capsule, for one capsule we have about 400 milligram. And we launched it more than 10 years. This, I would like to review the mechanism of the, about the bone formation. There is the paper that uh, this such quadrangularis can augment the IGF system. About the bone formation, we have two cells. One is auto osteoblast and one is osteoclast. Osteoblast is for, formation, for bone formation, to build the bone. And the bone, and osteoclast is for destroy the bone. Uh, in my review, they show the Cisus quadrangularis can augment the osteoblast, so the potential of Cisus quadrangularis is for formation of the bone. By the way, there is uh, some study in mice. They can show the Cisus quadrangularis can inhibit bone loss. So right now, about the potential of Cisus quadrangularis have bone. One is bone formation, is one for inhibit the bone destroy. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important thing when we talk about the herb for treatment is, is about the safety. Everybody asks about the safety. So there is the review about the safety of Cisus quadrangularis. This is in mice. That show there is uh, no toxicity in hematological, clinical chemistry, urine analysis, and organ waste. By the way, this is the study in mice. By the way, we already have the safety in human also. So now that's why we uh, can use it in uh, our patient. Okay, and what is the bone marker? The bone marker is the concept of uh, for the follow-up of the treatment of the osteoporosis. Actually, the, stand, the gold standard is, is the BMD. It is a bone mineral density. But the BMD can change after the treatment maybe one or two years. That's too long. When I, do the, when I did the fellowship, I, I don't have a time. <laughs> so I have to use the bone marker that changed very fast. Maybe uh, in some product it changed only uh, in two weeks. And this is the bone marker in uh, Faru in a tightly productive female. Let's show. This is uh, our reference mm -hmm. that I told you. Right now we use some. Uh, we use the bone marker for uh, follow up the treatment. And this is uh, my reference paper to do this research. 
My hypothesis is that since such quadrangularly would increase the P1 and P, that it is the bone marker for the bone formation. And CTX is, is the bone marker for bone absorption or bone destroying in postmenopausal osteopenia women. Mm -hmm. Okay. And the objective is uh, the effect of the such quadrangularis. And the second objective is, is about the possible of adverse effect. This is that uh, random mind control trying. The inclusion criteria is, is about the po it is the postmenopausal woman and uh, osteopenia, the age between uh, 45 to uh, 75. The exclusion criteria is uh, abnormal renal and liver function test. Even we, even I, we know that uh, it's safe, but in some patient we don't want to use it, right? And uh, all she have the previous treatment with the bisphosphonate. That's, uh, that is a standard treatment for osteoporosis. Use serum or hormonal replacement therapy. In some women have a secondary osteoporosis, so we exclude. And there is a some underlying disease, such as the rheumatoid and scleroderma, that interfere the bone marker level. Uh, we already registered. Mm -hmm. And this is the protocol. After uh, we uh, recruit the patient and then we randomize one receive the CSAS quadrangularis and one receive the placebo. After three months, we already check the lab again. That's it. Okay. And most of the outcome we use a very easy standard. We use only a mean and median. This is the baseline cholesterol. But baseline characteristic in both groups, there's uh, nothing uh, uh, different that uh, significant. And also the creatinine, the bone mineral density, no difference in both groups. And this is the outcome. This is the outcome compared P1 and P between pre-treatment and post-treatment in control and uh, CSS quadrangularis group. You can see in control group, there is uh, no difference. But in treatment group, there is uh, some difference. How many difference? Th it is a difference around 15% uh, that uh, when we use the CSAS quadrangularis, the P1 and P is decreased. That's significant. And one of very important outcome that uh, we love it. It is about the safety. You can see it is uh, no difference between a control group and treatment group. You see? And another one is uh, when in treatment group, pre treatment and post treatment is no difference. So now we confirm the safety of the CSAS quadrangularis 400 milligram twice a day for, th for three months is safe. Okay, so about the discussion, at the first, my hypothesis, I would like to, <laughs> to we think about that a CSAS quadrangularis that will increase the P1 and P, right? But the outcome is no. So, so why? We have to find uh, some reason that why uh, 